Okay, here we go. How's there? How you doing, Josh? Yeah, this was kind of um, unplanned, so it may just be us two in here till nine o'clock. So <laughs> that is what it is. I'm kind of doing this because uh, FLP wasn't doing his today, and I was doing something about the same time. So I decided, well, I'll try to get one in later on this evening and see what happens. So here I am. Going to see if anybody else comes in here and I'll probably start getting into it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, but I decided to kind of have a loose subject today. Hey, Frank. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, the, the Guilty Pleasures podcast. What do you do to take a break? Or what do you do to slow yourself down a little bit? Or just things you like in general? I know I'd say Guilty Pleasure. Don't read too much into that, all right? Because my big thing is... I like my racing games, and I watch wrestling, and a little bit of other YouTube stuff here. Oh, I love thunderstorms, though. But you be safe, buddy. As long as it isn't too bad, you just be safe. <laughs> and hey, Nina, how you doing? And the reason I kind of bring this up is. I'm guilty of it. I'm sure you guys have been guilty of it. Is you got to take a little bit of time for yourself. How you doing, Nina? And just take a break. Give yourself a mental break. Because I mean, I've I've done it myself with the prepping and the outdoors thing and the survival thing. That's why I haven't been cutting too many videos. I'm kind of taking a little bit of a break from it, and we're gonna get back into it here in a little bit. But everything, even like my work started to revolve around that, and you burn yourself out. So that's why you got to take that break. You got to step away from it for at least a little bit and reevaluate. A lot of times, if you take the break, when you come back to it, it's a lot fresher again. It's not like you're, you feel like you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Like, um, um, like I want, as I said, I watch wrestling. I, it, it, I get a kick out of it. I just sit there and laugh hysterically at the at the television, but I forget about everything for a while. I don't focus on anything. I just sit down and enjoy myself. And I'm not saying you have to do like the wrestling thing. Pick up a hobby, go for a walk, go down to whatever, whatever floats your boat. Just wrestling in. The racing games are kind of mine. Um, where do games come in? I wouldn't even really say racing games because I play GTA 5 every now and again. That's the blow off steam. I come home, I had a bad day at work. I throw the GTA 5 in, in the um, Xbox 360 over there, and I can just run and muck like an idiot. I don't play online, I just run and muck like an idiot. Stealing cars and just running around all over the countryside. But when I get done with it about an hour and a half, two hours later. <laughs> yeah, I'm a WWE fan. What can I say? But back to the GTA. About an hour and a half, two hours later, I feel a heck of a lot better. Nobody got hurt. And I got all the stress out of my system. Because I tapped into a game and ran around the around the countryside like an idiot. Yes, it's fun. That, that's it's a video game. That's people read way too much into video games. I jump on that thing. I'm not reading anything into it. I just want to wreak havoc. And when I'm done wreaking havoc, and I get back to the real world, I'm fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, there's nothing wrong with MMA. I, I tried watching it, and I kind of sort of get into it, but I wasn't really a big fan of Bach. Hello. <laughs> and 
<laughs> Paul, I, would, I bet you're kind of glad that you didn't after half the crap he'd been through. Especially over the last thing with the racist comments. Like, oh, yeah. Nice job there, Terry. I guess the other thing that comes with the wrestling. And I didn't know him well. I don't know how many of you guys. Um, I use an Xbox 360 just. But I don't know how many of you guys actually watched ECW. The original. Not what, what the WWE brought back. The original ECW. Um, they used to come down to an arena really close where I live, right over Manac, and they called it the, the Golden Dome. And they would be there about once every two months, and I would always end up getting there early and hanging out with them before the show started. And a couple of the guys I kind of, I wouldn't say got to know on a first name basis, but. <laughs> I never really got the, I wouldn't say on a first name basis, but like uh, New Jack, Tommy, and one or two other ones knew who I was when I came up. And I, I, I walk around the back and they're like, yeah, he's cool. <laughs> Let him in. And I, I'd be back just, just to keep appearances up like 15 minutes before everything would start. I'd sneak right back around the front again. <laughs> but, um, it's just one of those things. It's just like you get there early, kind of hang out with them a little bit. And that's what kind of really got me interested in, a little bit more interested in the wrestling thing. Um, there's another guy I know, I'm not calling him a buddy of mine, but another guy I know used to book. So, really, a superstar just kind of known. That's what I'll call it, just kind of known. Um, like one of the guys that wrestled with ECW that I know um, still lives around the area here is a not like a uh, direct relative, but a distant relative of mine too. Because um, his great aunt on one side of the family was my grandmother on another side, on my side of the family. But it's like two different branches of the of the same family tree. No, no, no groupie. I just go back and hang out, and that's that's about it. But um, other than that, like I used to go to the every now and again, go to a couple of WWE shows. The problem is now is like the, when they when they're live on Mondays, and when they have the, the pay per view, I can't go because I got to get up way too early in the morning to go to work. So I don't really I don't even watch the pay per views anymore. I just watch the live broadcast, whatever I can catch, and call it done. Hey, Virginia. Your tree's been struck by lightning a few times. Well, that's interesting. I've we've had a couple of trees around here hit by lightning, but you usually find out about it about a week or two after the fact. I don't know what to say about this. This thing is massive. There's just a lot. Like, yeah, it's going to die. But I'm not talking about that. But, um, yeah, yeah, if, yeah my family tree is kind of a little messed up, too. I hear you. As long as you don't have a family family tree, it could double as a club. You're in good shape. Because yeah, if you look at my family tree, it actually looks like something from West Virginia, but it isn't. My dad and my mom and my uncle and my aunt, two brothers married two sisters. And from there, the, uh, the hilarity begins. It's it's weird. <laughs> yeah, because one, two of the cousins, well, me and my cousin on my mother's side, 
are also the same on my father's side in that family. There are differences is where we fall in everything. On my mother's side of the family, you go up through all the grandchildren, I'm the oldest. You go to my father's side of the family, you go back through all the grandchildren, I'm the second to the youngest. But there's two of them, me and my cousin Jeff, which is younger than me, that are shared by both sides. It, yeah, it's people are, like, are you from West Virginia? I'm like, no, but I should be, huh? <laughs> I, <laughs> hey, you will. Hey, thanks for doing uh Friday night, Will. Man, you did you did a great job, absolutely great job. Loved it, and I, 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 I can't wait to see that card. I'm gonna probably after, after this, probably either tonight or tomorrow when I get home. Hey, War Dog. Yeah, but when I get home, either tomorrow or tonight before I go to bed, do you have any of those cart videos put up? I didn't have a chance to look yet because I want to see what, what you're starting with. Because I was going to do an idea like that when I go on vacation, cut a video like that. But instead of using it like a walker or whatever you're using, I'm going to use a... Um, expandable dolly that you that i actually use for work and try to use it as a um a travoy if you know what i mean by that it's that's the wooden frame but they used to drive through the woods so i'm gonna try to use it like that and take it through the woods and see how well it works just just an idea just an idea that, that i'm kicking around anyway well i think the, the new light here is working over here yeah. The new light. Hey, you're back. What's how you doing, buddy? And um, War Dog, let me see if I'm subscribed to you. Huh. Okay, well, let me go to your channel there. Hi, Purple. <laughs> hey, Lakeisha, what's up? Oh, love you too, Lakeisha. Thanks for stopping by, hon. <laughs> I miss you. Yeah, that, that's one thing you find out with a lot of my chats. We kind of start on one subject, and by the time we get to the end of the chat, we've gone through about three subjects, got went back to the original subject, and hit about four more, and are kind of working ourselves backwards again. So it, it's just the way the, these things go. Hmm. Let's see if I can turn this down, or am I going to turn it off? That's better. Turn it down just a little bit. See if the new light said. Yes, it is a nasty guard attack. They're backwards a lot. It also happens to match my teeth. <laughs> and it was free. And since I went out, did some shopping, it just happens to be clean, too. So, unlike my work hat that says uh, 1776 on it. How about that? Does that help you out some? <laughs> oh, you did. Oh, I know a couple other uh, people in different branches of military that just they just harp on the National Guard. Like it's either they harp on the National Guard or the Coasties. Like that, both of them. They just harp on them like they're merciless with them. <laughs> hey, I could put on my NRA hat. Hey, 
It's clean too. Oh, there you go. There you go, Will. That's cool. Oh, yeah. I, I agree backwards. That they actually do. Especially down around here. It's, um, you'll see them go, going up and down the river here. They're stationed. The Coasties here are stationed up in Swickley or up around them. Damage worth a lot. But you'll see them come down through um, our part of the river. And either go up the Beaver River or go down by the uh, nuclear power plant. Kind of just floating around, floating around doing their things, just keeping an eye, keeping an eye on the shipping lanes. So yeah, they do they do, do a bunch. National Guard, the last time I seen the National Guard out running around around running around around here. They're standing in the middle of the road, in the middle of the road, supposedly in the middle of an exercise all watching their cell phone. Hey, Juanita. Happy Labor Day, Lucas. I'll talk to you. Talk to you soon, huh? <laughs> yeah, I ran to. Let me see. This. Friday, I was going up to the VA, this the um, the VA home up in Highland, going up to make a delivery up there. And they had the ROTC and three Hummers, which could have been the, the guard practicing something. Three Hummers, there's two guys directing traffic, two hum three Hummers sitting off the side of the road, and about three people talking to each other. And I'm like, what in the hell are they doing? It'd be different if they actually look like they're doing something. They're just kind of just standing there looking at each other the way. <laughs> like, okay, guys. <laughs> and then when I left, when I left the, left the, uh, the VA home, started coming down the hill. Two of them were coming up the hill. There's one that's left down there. So I don't know if they're pulling some kind. Uh, maybe. Nobody had their four ways on though. They're all standing around and two. They may have one go down, but the closest reserve. Oh, wait a minute. That's a good possibility because up, not that far from the VA home, there is the job corps. So, there's a reserve unit in Butler. There's a reserve unit. Over in Coriopolis, but I think there may be a reserve. Unit. I believe so. It's up up Highland Road, like the old uh, the old VA hospital, which is now the a VA home. Hey Thomas, like if you're coming up the hill, the old VA the VA homes on the right, the job corps you kind of go off the road a little bit more, and it's on the left. It's like the job court, you go one way, that's why you go to the job court, you stay to the other side to go to the old VA hospital or the VA home now up on Highland. Yeah, so because I think over the job court, they, they may have a reserve unit there too. I know they got something there because there's a shooting range there up on top of that hill. Yeah, see, I've have I have seen that. Well, that this isn't a hospital. It's, it's a it's a home. It's like a hospice. Uh, there's more residents there than there are more resident patients there uh, there than there are um, nurses and staff. But there's a, there is a shooting range up there. So many times I've gone up there, and I think they're doing um, certs up there because I think it's like. I'm trying to think. I think it's Tuesdays and Thursdays or Tuesdays and Fridays. I go there and you hear you hear an AR fire the whole time you're there. So I think, it, in, in fact, the one uh, guard says, I think uh, on Tuesday they do, they do certs and they just have some kind of other shooting going on on Friday. If you went up to if you went up to um, backwards, you'd probably. 
if you've been there before, you probably know what I'm talking about. But I think they do do um, some of the medical stuff there, too. Okay, now which one you go on to the one over over in Highland Park that used to be well, it still was a hospital to, to an extent, but nothing major, or you go to the VA up behind Oakland because I delivered to that one too. And there's people in and out of that thing all the time. Okay, you're I the one up on University Drive. I delivered to that one. It's University Drive is right off of Aliquip, Aliquippa Street. That's the one that's up behind Oakland. I that place that place is it, that place is huge. Yeah, so I. I and the other thing I really know about that VA is the loading dock. And if I remember correctly, I might be able to get the security officer's um, little cubicle. And the only reason I might remember, remember that because I went there once, that's because I almost pulled a bumper off of another truck because we locked bumpers. Yeah, that sounds about right. That looks about, about the size of it. Um, I don't... That's what I'm thinking. You probably know a little bit more about that than I do. Um, the last hospital I was at where they actually told me how many beds were in it was uh, Salem Hospital. And I think I said they only had like 200 and some beds in it. Um, Salem General over in Salem, Ohio. Here to that or catching some Z's. <laughs> oh, yeah, but me and back was talking about uh, the VAs over in uh, Pittsburgh uh, with my job. And at the get together, I'll probably expound on this a lot more in terms of I don't really want to expound too much about my job online. <laughs> but um, with my job, I go to seven hospitals a day for five days a week. And that's just the beginning of my route. And then the rest of my route takes off from there. But um, I've seen some pretty interesting things. Like my first hospital... Um, I don't know if he was a drug addict or just mentally disturbed or what have you, but they had a mentally disturbed patient escape and they didn't get him caught. <laughs> they didn't seem too worried about it because I think um, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm too worried about about it because something tells me that they have like three people. He's run down, run down his back alley as hard as he can go, and they only have like three people walking after him. So I think that they have a good idea where he's going to go. They're just going to go grab him and drag him back. And from what I've heard, is not with that particular guy, but there's a couple of them in there that if they if they escape, they know where they're going, and they usually have somebody waiting for them. I'm like, that's comforting. Thank, thank you for telling me that. That's there. You go. <laughs> yeah, but I see so I see a lot of crazy stuff. But enough on that. I said I'll expound a little bit. I'll I'll expound more on that at the get together. <laughs> oh, 
And see, backwards law probably already put two two and two together and probably seen the logo on my shirt and know exactly what I do. I could be wrong on that, but I think he probably already knows exactly what I do because he probably seen seen <laughs> I never leave the keys in the truck. Hey, a cunt, TG, how you doing, hon? Yeah, but... <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah, but... You can probably imagine some of the interesting things I have seen. Some of the interesting things that I have hauled. <laughs> hey, Mouse Nose, how you doing, hon? <laughs> <clears throat> oh, but yeah, that's it's an interesting job. It keeps you on your toes for sure. Which, oddly enough, I can say this. All the places in Pittsburgh from people who had the route before I had it, told me all the places that I am going to be afraid at and people are going to want me dead in or if you're going to get mugged, it's going to be here. That's my favorite place to go. And what's weird is it, they're like, well, apparently you went in there with some kind of chip on your shoulder, number one, number two, Two, not only did you have a chip on your shoulder, but you probably also threw a lot of disrespect around, which made people not like you that much. I go in there. I respect these people. I'm friendly as can be, and most of these people in this bad area have my back. Now, why am I supposed to be afraid of this? I mean, this is during the daytime, and even the people that live there since nighttime, it's a different situation altogether. But <laughs> I go into these areas, and the places I have problems are places that these people absolutely loved. And I don't go to chip on my shoulder, just people out there, the people in the other places are idiots. And they're a lot more well to do, so to speak. And they're giving me grief over stuff I have no control over. Exactly. Country girl just hit the nail on the head. You, you treat people the way you want to be treated. I go in and the, the one place I'm talking about is literally the hood. It's the hood. It's the ghetto. I deliver right dead, set, right dead center. When I come rolling in there, and it's not just the old crowd or the young crowd or the this crowd or the that crowd. They're all nice. They all wave to me. I've had people to look like they would kill, kill somebody in jail. Like, I got your back. Don't worry about it. I, there's some stuff going on around here. We got your back. Just go in, do what you need to do. We got your back. You come back out, and we'll have your back as you leave. So, Okay. <clears throat> Which is funny. It's like another another route I had. I used to deliver to a federal prison. Everyone's like, oh, that's just going to be a bad day for you. It's going to be a bad day. You have to deliver to the prison, blah, blah, blah. I went in there. Instead of going in with the preconceived notion that it's just going to be a bad time. No, I was not allowed to talk to prisoners. I understood that. I lived by that. That's okay, but they said the wardens and the guards are going to be all pricks and this and that and the other thing. Within the second week I delivered there, me and them were cracking jokes with each other like you wouldn't believe. So, hey, Christy. <laughs> and they're, they're saying, oh, that's just going to be a bad place for you because they're going to like be mean and everything else. They almost had me coming up for visitation, not to visit the, the prisoners, to visit them. So I'm just like, okay, I had no problem there either. So 
I don't know. I guess it's that, that's a, a slight commiseration of some of the people I must work with that because then I've been almost all of you. Hey, Mickey, all of you have been in a work situation and you probably had that one jackass that just feeded you BS from point, from point A to point B and everywhere in between, and it's all been wrong. <laughs> so you kind of have to watch for that too. Yeah, probably some of you probably started to think that this guy has some serious ADD. You'd be correct. That's why I think I could go from one subject to another and not really skip a beat and just keep on going. Squirrel. <laughs> but, um, so, getting back to the original <laughs> premise of the chat here, any, any of you guys ever have like a guilty pre a guilty pleasure, something that you do to take a break? Like um, take a break from work, take a break from prepping, and just in general take a just take a break. Let the mind wind down. Let the body wind down, and just relax. See, I do that too, Christy, because before I, it's funny you say that, and this has to do, when I started the, the chat today, I started like by saying my two guilty pleasures are video games and wrestling. I was listening to a Jim Cornette podcast from January and just laughing hysterically. Awesome. Okay, survival comes and Timo, and you and T Bear, and FOP is going to be there. And right, and I think I think is the rescue boss coming too. Awesome. You see, I and I've the what I've. I've only done a couple walk on the beach, beaches and boat rides. But I have talking about going to the ocean and listening to the waves. Another thing I would do, depending on where I'm at, is I would go, I'm not nowhere close to the ocean, so I find me like a little ripply area that's making a little bit of noise by the creek, by a creek someplace. I did it back here until the area got all grown up. And I just sit there and just close my eyes and take a nap, just listening to the um, the water running by. Oh, that's see, I've done a little bit of research too. It, it it depends. It depends on what you're. I guess for me, it depends on what I'm researching, because. If it's one of those things I kind of get into it. If I if I get into it and I really start, next thing you know is I'm like, I'll do the research I need to do, and I'm like doing the research of, on different other things I found in my research to further. So it kind of starts building on each other. Yeah, you know exactly what I'm saying. You do research, but you find stuff. Instead of answering questions with the research, you just created more questions. So now you do the research to cover those questions and make, make even more questions. See, I'm going to start doing that. And I actually got, um, I got some, got some leather. I uh, got um, a big hunk of 10 ounce. Got some eight ounce, got some six ounce. Just some stuff to play around with. And um, with the saddle care stuff, I got more than, more than enough saddle care stuff here to, to uh, condition the leather. And just to play around with something, I also got some beeswax to condition the leather with too. Just some different things to try. Oh, 
Um, I, I hear you on there backwards. I have a few of the tools, and uh, the tools that I have is actually what we used to use. Well, what we still use with the horses is just my parents have theirs, and I actually bought bought myself my own set, and it's like a punch, and I got a, a couple different sets. And I also have some antique stuff that I bought too. I bought um, antique rivet set and a couple antique snap sets. So I have like a bunch of different stuff to work with, except like the antique snap sets and the rivet sets. I can't really use them because you actually need someplace solid to mount them. It's like one of the bench top deals and you put, you position everything, you go kaplunk. There you go. I think I know what you're talking about. It kind of looks like a little pizza cutter type of deal. What I'm going to start working on here soon, probably like right after the get together or right before the get together while I'm on vacation, is I have a set of 24 inch leather shears. I mean, they're shears, but they're about, I have to back up, they're literally about that long. That you open up your hand about this much, but the other end opens up about like like that. If I can get them to work, the problem is, is the blades are a little loose, is doing a deal like that. Oh, okay, okay. I think I know what you're talking about. I'll, I'll look that up after the. Um, I'll look that up after the um, after the um, chat's done with here. Talking about half circle stuff, the one thing I've been looking for and I cannot find for the life of me talking about tools is um, is a uh, I can't remember what it's called. Oh yeah, a bull ad. I talk to people that know a, a good bit about antique tools. I'm like, you guys have a bowl of ads. And they look at me like I grew a third head and I just cussed out their mother. I'm like, what? I just asked for a bowl of ads. I, what, they explain what it is. And they're just like, something like that actually exists. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Welcome back, Nina. We'll get try to give you the hug through the screen here. <laughs> hey, Jim. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have a couple, a couple other things too. But talking about tools between. The outdoor, the outdoor stuff I have, the tools for my outdoor stuff, including the cooking, I should say my outdoors equipment, my toolbox downstairs full of all, most of my automotive tools and my bike tools, leather working tools, model building tools. I'm sitting there, I'm thinking I have probably close to, especially the, the automotive stuff just alone, I probably have about 10 grand in that. And that's just basic hand tools. That's not any of the electronic stuff. That's basic hand tools. But it, I got that much of it over probably about spending money on what I needed over a, a, a period of 15 years. Oh, yeah, 2000... I probably have the leather working tools. I'd be lucky if I'd be pushing 150 bucks. I'll be honest with you. What's up, BA? Oh, but, um, yeah, I probably have about one hundred and fifty dollars in just leather working tools. Okay. 
What's up, Savage? <laughs> yeah, see, Savage is starting to say hi like I say hi in everybody else's chats. I just do everybody I see in one shot. Because what would happen is I start saying hi to one person at a time. About like kind of machine gunning in and it timed me out for about two minutes. <laughs> like, oops. <laughs> I think I lost a wrench that way one time. Not sure, but I think I may have lost a wrench. Ain't worried about it, but no big deal. Okay, Christy. Got round up the chickens. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, how is um how's Josh coming with the lawnmower? I know that I know that pain, Virginia. Virginia Prepper, I know that pain. I'm out of room and I'm still buying stuff. I'm like, okay, we're gonna put this at now. So like uh, I have a tractor show coming up a week before my get together in September. Uh my get together is the twenty second. The tractor show goes I think from like the fourteenth to the sixteenth. It's the weekend before my get together. And uh, not tool tool wise, but other hobby wise, I'm going to try to dump as much as I can. I'm just like, okay, I'm not doing anything with this stuff. Gone. <laughs> okay, because when you showed the video, it had a, had a little bit of a load to it. A little bit of look to the lawnmower, but it looked like it was cutting good. No, but it, it as long as it's right. Well, those the motors that they put in those things anyway are well, they weren't the greatest. Once you get a lope in them like that, they almost always have a lope unless unless you totally rebuild the carburetor, put a brand new carburetor on it. But um, no, it, it's running pretty good. He did a good job on that. Well, see, I want to get a crosscut saw too. I want to get a two-man crosscut and a one-man crosscut. I found a guy at the antique store down in Ambridge that I'm thinking about getting the, the crosscut saws from. Yes, he did, Nina. I know the one, the two, the two men, a couple of the two men I was looking at, he wanted like sixty-five dollars a piece for him, but they needed cleaned up. Not that bad. It's all surface trust. So I mean, if I brought it, if I brought it home and um, ran the cookie disc on it for a while, then attack it with the file and set the teeth, it should be fine. Hey, seven. Actually, I was thinking about getting one of those. Hey, FLP, what's up? <laughs> Oh, just talking about just different things, whatever comes to mind, like I usually do. Yeah. Oh, fun times, fun times indeed. I know it's a little bit later than than what than what you usually do at FOP, but I was like you, I was all doing stuff, so I figured, well, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and do it at eight o'clock and, and see who shows up. And well, you got what you got now, which is pretty good. I'm kind of enjoying this. <laughs> hey Neo, how you doing, buddy? And thank you. Oh, really? Yeah, they, they're bad around here too. And up there around and judging from your name, up around the finger lakes, you don't you, you don't have skeeters up there. They're not skeeters. They're Hueys that bite. Because from about, <laughs> because I know up in Canada, it's just you. They basically said where we're at. <laughs> when we're up, 
we were up in Quebec, Canada. They they pretty much said says you want to be indoors before the before the sun goes over the horizon because that once the sun goes over the horizon, you not only hear them but you see like these big black marks of mosquitoes coming up and they're coming for you. So you want to be indoors with everything shut in the AC going with no leaks from the outside. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. Oh, one thing I'm thinking about doing though is, or I should say is, um, you know, so my, most of my streams, I'll, I'll probably start with the subject and usually the subject is covered in about the first 10 minutes and we just have fun after that. So, so it is what it is. I mean, you're all having fun, right? Yeah, the one. Yeah, it was what Savage is talking about that real mower. I'm. At, I was actually thinking about getting one for a little bit. Ah. Okay, that was weird. Yeah, I live kind of out in the country, so it's not uncommon to hear gunshots every once in a while. But that's like automatic fire. <laughs> well, nothing's bounced off the back of the house. I ain't worried about it. <laughs> Oh, you may, you may not. It all depends, Thomas. It all depends. I pretty much said my piece about it for tonight, but the gun talk we had a few nights ago, when was that? That was what, last Saturday? I mean, last Sunday, right, FOP? Oh, they're always coming for me, Will. That, I'm not surprised about that. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, coming, they're coming for me, and they're going to put me in that... Uh, in that perma hug jacket where I'll be like this all day. I could just hug myself to death all day long. <laughs> yeah, tooting the heat, yeah. Which uh, the fair has had over the last couple of days. Yesterday was the last day for it. I put in for one rifle. That two two decent rifles there. I put in for one. It was the uh a Remington. 770 uh, chambered in 308. <laughs> I thought myself all the time. Oh, see, I'm kind of limited. I'm limited on it, too. But back to what I was saying, there's a Rem Remington 770 chambered in 308. Nice, Savage. And the other one was a Savage. I'm not sure what the model number was, but it was chambered in 6.5. Oh, it begins at the C. I can't remember what it was. It's 6.5 something rather. And I wasn't quite sold on that for some reason. Wasn't feeling it. Creedmore, thank you, Backwoods. Don't ask me why. I just wasn't quite sold on it. I don't know much about it. 308, I know, I know, I know a good deal about it. So I'm like, okay. Yeah, see, that's probably gonna be me too, Will. I don't have an AR-15 yet either. So it's probably going to be me because, well, I'm 47 now. But we'll see what happens. I'm 
There's a couple other things I need to take care of first before I get the AR-15, so. Yeah, but um, hey, Timo, what's up, buddy? See, yeah, tomorrow, Finger Lakes, we're going to the Canfield Fair over in Ohio. So I'm gonna be there for all oh, probably about six, seven hours, and we're going to come home and go from there. But I'm thinking I'm going to be home well before Backwoods does his deal on Prepper X tomorrow night. So, Yeah, so yeah, as I said, I should be here for back, for a back, Backwoods uh, feed. Yeah, what what I'm doing though tomorrow, like tomorrow morning to tomorrow afternoon is it's kind of like family tradition. We all go to the for Labor Day we go to the Canfield the uh, Canfield Fair, spend a day. My folks go, they watch the horse pool, they watch we watch the harness racing. But for about the first half of the day I'm there. I'm there for three reasons. To look at trackers, to buy Die cast trackers and to shoot pictures of trackers. That's that's my goal for the day. Then whatever I do after that is whatever I do after that, that anything after that's just bonus. So you're saying scroll chasers can pack it away there, FLP. <laughs> oh, because I know when I, when I was his age, I could pack the food away. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh. I I know what I was like when I was their age. I just cannot imagine having three of them at the same time. It'd be like you do about eight pounds of food and say, there's the food, and you kind of hide behind the table and hope they don't eat your fingers in the process. Because <laughs> I know how I was. <laughs> Oh, that sounds good. Two things I like the most in this world, bacon and eggs. There's only one thing I like better than bacon and eggs, and that's noodles or pasta. Oh. Oh. Anything cooked in in iron is good. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah, that's what my tomorrow's gonna be like. Except we're not gonna be eating picnic food. I'm gonna be eating fair food, but I'm gonna have to be probably so stuffed that we're gonna come when we get home, I'm gonna be like literally laying laying on my bed going, I've had enough. I'm not gonna eat till tomorrow. I've had enough. <laughs> Oh, actually, there's a stand that does strombolis. And literally, these strombolis are about as big around as my head. And every year I go there, I get one of these strombolis. Usually, right after they open up, it's they're fresh. And I get these strombolis, and I'll sit there, and I'm like, I'm going to slow down. Night, B.A. I'm going to slow down and enjoy this stromboli. Let me reiterate. It's just big rounds my head, and I'll usually down the thing in about five minutes. Then sit there and wonder why I feel like I just swallowed a football.
Yes, they do, Virginia Prepper. I remember being in that age group, and I was just pretty much an eating machine. I wake up in the morning, and if I didn't, if I didn't have something in my hand to eat between the ages of fifteen and twenty-two, it was a bad day for somebody until I got something in my hand that I could eat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they are. FLP. Hey, T Bear. How you doing? Hugs to you too, hon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it once. I'm going to say it again. Squirrel Chaser is pretty much the, the, the eating machine. The girls kind of know how to pace themselves, I've noticed. The boys, no, the, once they start, once they get started, they're just like, it's like Pac-Man. I've been, when I was his age, I used to be compared to Pac-Man. I just wouldn't stop. Just walk, 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 <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, I could, if, I, if I was that age anymore. Yeah, because now I have to tell myself, I'm starting to feel stuff. Stop eating. Just stop eating. You're starting to feel stuffed. In a little bit, you're going to start forcing it. Then you're not going to feel good. <laughs> uh, one thing I can say about that, though, of FLP. He's eating all tomatoes and peppers before they get in the house. At least you know he's eating good. He's eating his vegetables. There's more I can say about myself. You give me potatoes, you give me meat, and I'm a happy guy. Yeah, that's that's another thing. Thomas brought that up, but I'm not gonna bring up bring that up too much. But Thomas does bring a good point. I'm working on that tea bear. I'm I'm still finding some stuff I like in the way I like to eat it. And usually, when I do get get around to eating veggies, which I do eat veggies, just not as much as everything else. Instead of getting them cooked, I'd rather give them a salad. I'm just that kind of person. I'd rather have them raw than have them cooked. They taste better to me raw than cooked. So that's just me. <laughs> I'd be whooped too there. It's. From what you're saying before, it's not like you had a very, very busy day today. Fun, but busy day today. Hey, Eliza. How you doing? <laughs> That's how you know it was a good weekend off is when you need it or it was a good vacation because when you come home, you know it's a good vacation when you need a vacation from your vacation. There's also another thing when you find out your puppy needs a puppy. That could be a problem, but it's, it's a good thing when, when you need a vacation from your vacation means actually went out and you did something. But uh, we're rounding the top of the hour here. Hey, I love you guys. I love all you guys. I thank you all for coming. Um, as I said, this is an impromptu thing. FLP wasn't going to be 
but was pretty much saying he wasn't going to do anything today, which is which is okay. I figured I'd try to fit the bill, but I had to fit the bill just a little bit later than what he usually does. But I thank you all for coming. You guys are you guys rock. You guys are awesome. And I will talk to you all later. All right. So I'll see you guys on tomorrow at probably in um in um back with lost back with lost chat on Prepper X. So yeah, don't forget about eight o'clock on Mondays is back with back with law and Prepper X. Uh Tuesday, seven o'clock central Louisiana time. You've got Southern Ark Homestead, and about a half hour after her chat on Prepper X, she has a ladies-only chat. The guys, us guys go there, but we kind of make sure everybody stays in line. Then on a Friday night, oh, don't worry about it, FLP, it's okay. Then on Friday night on the Prepper X is a two-hour Prepper chat. So make sure you guys go check those out. Um Make sure with uh, Nina, and um, I'm pretty sure Nina, FLP, and Backwoods Law do have a link to get to Prepper X if you want to go there. But uh, make sure you guys check those out. But uh, for now, I'm going to say good night. So you all have a good night as well. Bye. There it is.